Hi, it's Margie Armstrong, and this is a message from me to Cranbrook ratepayers and electors. It's some thoughts and questions you might like to ponder because they are thoughts and questions that I have had. And some of them are what should we do if we see officials? bullying people or we see evidence of a robbery or we see a person or group trying to cause grievous harm to people or animals what should we do if we see people who are being blackmailed by fear or we see people who are misusing their position or even horrible. What do we do when we see people who are vulnerable and are being exploited? What do we do? Do we come up with all the reasons like do we think we are too busy to check things out? Do we think we do not have the money? Do we think we're too old? Do we think we're out of the loop in the community and someone else will do it? Is transport a challenge or just an excuse? Is speaking not fluent? Is that an excuse? Well, I ask all these questions in regard to my nomination to the Cranbrook Council. Because when I looked at it, I had to tick on all the above boxes on why I should not nominate. But the overriding reason is that no one else seemed to be brave enough to speak up and try to make a difference. I remembered that Winston Churchill came out of the shadows and took the mantel of the Prime Minister of UK at 77 years. So I guess 76 years is not an excuse for me. And the following quote resonated to me. Neutral men are the devil's allies. It's pretty, pretty powerful. And animal welfare and the brotherhood that we seem to have going on has allowed corruption. Am I the only person who was suspicious about the Awasi Express ever since it hit the headlines? There was no dispute that there were thousands of sheep in a terrible distress, but it all seemed to be very convenient that Faisal Eula had to go on five trips to get the footage. If it was so awful for him, he should not have gone on the ship for the second trip, let alone another four trips. Well, we now know that this man Faisal Euler was paid 38,000 Australian into his bank. We also know that Animals Australia was offering other shit, sorry, not sh ship workers, $1,000 for comp comprising photos. What did Animals Australia expect these people to do? $1,000 Australian was worth 105,000 Pakistan rupees per photo, just under a year's income per photo. And these are people who are very poor and were working to make money for their families. And they actually have a different take on animal welfare as well. Of course, anyone who thinks about it knows they would have been very happy to stage photo video evidence. Uh, there's a link here and they're listed below. There's another article by the Daily Telegraph. It actually quotes the emails from Animals Australia. If Faisal Euler was so upset, 
Why do you need $38,000 to set it up? Uh, here's his, there's a, limp, limp, a link here, uh, and that's listed below. But you can see him at 320. He's a great actor. He must have been rubbing his hands together. 38,000 Australian equals 4 million Pakistan rupees. He became a Pakistan multi-millionaire from these trips. 140,000 Pakistan rupees is the annual income in Pakistan. I do not know the annual income of Philippine workers, but I guess it would be similar. So $1,000 Australian to supply graphic photos would be hard to give up. Of course, they would have cut off the ventilation to distress the sheep. They needed photos. Animals Australia can say they told the workers not to hurt the sheep, but they still offered the money for the photos, knowing exactly what would happen. It is Animals Australia who should be charged for animal cruelty. I think it's interesting to list who benefited from the Awasi Express debacle. Well, Animals Australia, 60 Minutes Program, Faisal Euler, well, he, he got lots, other sh sheep, sorry, other ship workers, all the media reports, the politicians who had their few weeks of limelight, and who did not benefit from the Awasi debacle? Well, the sheep definitely did not benefit. The farmers, the truckies and feed suppliers, the livestock export industry, the ship owners, and rural businesses, small and large. If the farmers cannot sell their product, everyone loses and eventually it will trickle to the city. But back to you. Why am I referring to the Awasi? Because I feel it puts a context into our local situation. Based on the fact that the directors of Emanuel Exports have been charged animal cruelty that happened on the ship. So does that mean that you, a farmer, can be charged for animal cruelty if one of your shearers or shed hands kick a sheep? And furthermore, I was angry about the Awasi Express, but I can tell you I was absolutely ropeable when I discovered that an employee of the Cranbrook Shire Council was part of a plot with the RSPCA to keep a horse of mine with a broken leg for a week. And it was just so that they could seize him and transport him. Transport a horse with a broken leg, okay, to prove something against me. For me, that is just as bad as causing the trauma to the 2,400 sheep. And I wonder, was anyone paid money by the RSPCA to prevent Fluffy from being put out of his misery? All the people who were complicit to keep Fluffy alive for the 48 hours unnecessarily need to be charged with animal cruelty. It makes me also wonder Will the Cranbrook ratepayers have to pay any legal costs for the people who committed this animal cruelty? And question two, have the ratepayers already paid for any legal advice in regard to this? And do ratepayers have to pay legal costs for people facing criminal charges? And residents, it's not just the ratepayers who lose. Money spent 
on legal fees is money lost to the district. If you want to read about the story, there is more uh, on this link. So you can read it if you want. And the link will be listed below. My concern that something was not right actually prevented their little plot without me knowing. Because in my naivety, I thought it was just a stuff up by the Shire. Even after I was raided and robbed, well, I had a horse seized, okay, and I had cash pinched. I did not realise that it had started by either one lone employee or others in the Cranbrook Council. The payments by Animals Australia might be able to put a spin on the Awasi debacle. But there is no doubt about what happened with Fluffy because I have signed evidence. And yet amazingly, no one has stood up and says something is wrong. No one has apologised. But, of course, have you ever heard of a politician or a bureaucrat admitting his mistake? Animal welfare needs to be overhauled promptly. There is so much corruption within the animal welfare organisations. Well, if you want someone to speak up, I am here. I'm only offering myself for four years, so I will not be trying to keep my seat warm for the next time. I have no wish to propel myself into state or federal politics or join as a rural advocacy or rural cooperative committees. So I will not be backward in speaking out. It is all up to you. A very good friend thinks it is funny for me to say that I can be humble. Well, if I am the only voter for myself, it may be humbling but it will be a fair way down the humble list. Having a stroke, not knowing if I was going to live, paralysed and or speak, that was pretty humbling. But in reality, I am blessed by this experience. Another question, who made the RSPCA the go-to guys in relation to knowledge about animals and the and the fact that they have so much to say uh, the here is one statement which i think is pretty scary there is no future in live sheep export sheep producers and farming groups must act now to prepare for business beyond this cruel trade rather than fighting against the inevitable. Uh, the link is below. And my comment to you is, are you going to accept this and just roll over? The RSPCA, with their great knowledge, this is me being a bit sarcastic, a bit, okay, is apparently trying to stop electric fences. How will that affect you? I know how far how it will affect me. And did you know that the RSPCA have access to your banking situation? Please consider me in your choice of four councillors. Whoever misses out will have another opportunity as I am committed to only four years. Nuno Oliveira had a, a saying in regard to horse training, but it works here for me too. I may not achieve what I want, but I know what I want to achieve. And that says it all for me. With regard to any other concerns which are needed to be addressed in the council, I can make a logical decision for the benefit of the people in the Shire. However, 
my greatest interest is to protect farmers from the RSPCA, Animal Australia, etc., and support the elderly citizens of the Shire. We are building more units at the Darwinia Cottages Complex, and that is great. But right now, we do not have the infrastructure to support the elderly in Cranbrook. Cranbrook and Franklin seem to have fallen through the cracks. The two buses the Shire purchased are not suitable for the elderly. Why, I wonder? I hope you will vote for me so I can represent the interests of not only the people but also the animals that live within the Shire. And we should not have to live with fear. As soon as my personal issue with the RSPCA is completed, my book will be published. But while this will be embarrassing for the people named and their children and grandchildren, it will not change animal welfare, and that is what is needed. In case you think that I've just been sitting on my bum, have a look at the wiki, Wikipedia link, which has a bit of more knowledge. Um, and the link below is listed. If you want me to be on the council, I'm dedicated to make the time and effort. I have the technology to have a face-to-face -face virtual meeting place. So if you want to have a personal chat, we can do this without you having to travel. I am teaching people in Europe from here at Yardar in live time. So it's not difficult. Based on your interest, I will set up a question and answer webinar on a monthly basis on things that you want addressed. You will have access and straight talking without the political bullshit speak. I want to wish best wishes to all the nominees because I recognise how now how daunting it can be just to nominate. But it is healthy that there are six nominees. And to everyone in the Shire, so, sorry, I tell a lie because uh, there are a couple of exceptions. But in general, I wish everyone health and happiness. And I hope you're having a fabulous day. Thank you for watching and listening and I hope that there was some value uh, for you, but thank you. Authorised by Marjorie Jean Armstrong, Yard R Stud, 4065 Franklin Cranbrook Road, Cranbrook WA 6321, phone 61458 981 506, produced by Margie Armstrong. That's, I said that really quickly.